Inventory is no longer a challenge for many, so winning sales from your competition is just one of the keys to success today. Here to share a few techniques to close more sales is Sean Gardner, instructor and sales trainer at the Joe Verde Group. You've seen him here before on our network. Sean, thank you so much for taking the time of your schedule to join us. What factors should sales teams consider when strategizing to outperform their competitors? Okay, well, first of all, I'm going to start this by saying let's close more sales. That's right. Right? That's what it's all about. You know, we were, you were just saying that uh, you know, your competition, we got we got competition now. So the first thing we got to decide is who our competition is. Is your competition the dealership down the street or is your competition the other salesperson talking to your customer down the street? Isn't that your competition, the skills of that other salesperson in that's that right. other building? It is. And whoever has the better skills is the one that's going to win this day, right? That's right. That's right. No you know, question talk, about it. Yes, sir. You know, we talk about closing. Check this out, Jim. Let's say you're talking to 50 ish customers a month, give mm -hmm. or take. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And you're selling eight to 10 to 12 cars a month. All numbers are give or take. Right. All right. How about with those same 50 ish customers selling 15 cars a month, 20 cars a month, 25 cars a month or more? Yep. That's what closing sales is about, right? That's right. That's right. We're, we're talking about closing more of the customers you already talked to. We're not talking about working your day off. We're not talking about, you know, staying past your shift. We're talking about sharpening skills to do a better job with each customer. That's right. And by the way, for managers that are listening to Sean today, think about if you've got 10 salespeople in each one of those sales individuals sells you five more cars a month and you haven't increased an ad budget, you haven't increased the up count, you haven't increased the prospect, it, it's, it's totally based on your, your selling skills of those individuals, those salespeople that you've got. So go ahead. Yeah, no, absolutely. Look, we gotta hit the pause button a little bit here though, okay? I wanna talk about how to close, what closing really is, but especially in today's market, do our salespeople or do we also need tools on, on how to handle price questions and price concerns and, and price objections. You know, whether that be, Jim, online, on the phone, on the lot, when you close or in the negotiations, we need more tools on how to handle price than ever before. That's right. Because it's going to come up. Oh, okay? no doubt. And also, we need tools on how to work through any and all other buying objections like I mean, you sold cars, I sold cars, and this still applies. Do customers ever say they need to think it over? Of course. And do customers ever say, well, we need to shop around. This is the first place we've looked at. Absolutely. And do they ever say, we're in a hurry. I only have 15 minutes. I just wanted to take a quick peek at this truck, and I'll be back. That's, right? a, that's a personal famous... favorite, but it happens all the time. Yeah, what is that, Arnold? I'll be back. I'll be I'll back. Be that's back. Right. I don't know how to say it, but... I don't know, I'm not even sure he says that, okay? So so we need those tools, and I don't know if you have our JVTN, or I don't know if you can get to one of our sales workshops. That would be incredible, okay? But let's get back to closing, okay? When I first started selling cars, I think it was the very first Saturday. We used to do a Saturday morning meeting. It was a great management team, yep. okay? Jerry Townsend was the general manager. He was incredible. I was sitting in the conference room, and I'm looking at the wall and I see these five steps of selling. Did you have like the steps of selling on the wall when you were selling? A hundred percent. It was in it was in the sales uh, room as well. The training, the conference yeah. center, as well as right there at the desk. Yeah. So my five steps were meet, greet, qualify, present, demonstrate, and close. Okay. I mean, if you're a salesperson watching this, maybe you have some steps of selling too. But here's the point. Okay. Notice where closing is. It's it's, it was my last step. Maybe you got the eight steps. And, and the thing about it is, is Jim, and then I was told by my manager or other salespeople, the consensus was, okay, so when you close, you get done with the demo, you cross your fingers, you hold your breath, and you blurt out, listen, if I could get the, if I could get the terms and figures agreeable, I mean, is this a truck that you'd want to buy and drive home right now? And that was my close. That was it. That was it. And even today, even today as informed as the buyer is and as many changes that have gone on in the car business, 
70 percent of all salespeople only know and use one close and it's a version of if i could would you that's which right. by the way is a price close that's right because you're gonna have to work with the price and the trade and all the other numbers to make that customers happy that's but right look it's almost as if we say hey if we can get the earth and the moon and the sun to line up in your favor bob i mean is this the car you'd be willing to take home today and that's a pretty tough challenge look though jim uh a salesperson came to work at our store this uh, maybe two months i've been selling cars and he came from the big store okay and he goes, we, did, we didn't use it if I could, would you? We just say other than price. We just say other than price. So, you know, you get done with the demo, you just say, Bob, other than the price, is that your truck you want to buy and drive home right now? And you know what? It was easier. So I started, instead of saying if I could, would you, I used to say other than price, okay? And the customer said, yeah, I mean, if the price is right, maybe we would take it home now. Here's the problem. No wonder I had so many mini deals. <laughs> you know, because I was closing everything on price. The only way I could make money, Jim, was to go for the unit bonus. That's this, right. The 10 car bonus, the 15 car bonus, the 20. And you know what? I want those unit bonuses. But don't we want meat? on the bones all along the way. Of course, too. of course. And it's and it's totally attainable if done right. Yes, yes. So so that brings up the question, what is closing really, okay? And you know this, Jim, but Joe says this all the time. Closing is any question you ask or anything you do that keeps moving the sale forward, Yeah. okay? Like Joe says, it's any positive effect in the selling process, okay? So, so check this out. Customer walks on the showroom. It could have been a digital lead, phone up, it doesn't matter, fresh up. Customer walks on the show. You go over there with that spark in your eyes, spring in your step, smile on your face. You give that customer a, a firm business like handshake with a warm and friendly greeting. Isn't that closing? Yep. Would you? Here, here's the thing Joe says first few words, first few seconds are the most important thing you can get right. That's right. That's so, right. So I would say that's closing, right? Yeah. What about? slowing yourself down a little bit and asking the right type of questions to, to find some common ground with that customer, to help them feel comfortable in your dealership, to help them feel comfortable with you. You know, take that couple minutes. What is this? 71% of the customers that they bought because they liked you and they're making that decision within five minutes. That's right. You know, you, if you not go sooner. Check or sooner, you're, they could make that decision as you walk out there to talk to the customer. That's right. <laughs> I mean, you're walking out there vaping with, and your shirt collar's flipped up, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, customer's gonna go, I don't know, man, we're just looking around. Right. So that first impression, the greeting, taking time to make friends with the customer, helping them feel more comfortable. Yep. What about as you're making friends to investigate, to investigate for once knees and hot buttons? That's, that's, that's closing. Jim, 20% of the features is all a customer really cares about. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. They don't care about everything you know. My mistake in my, when I gave a customer a presentation up front is I would just walk around at cards. It's got this, 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 it's got this. And the problem with that, what's that doing to the cash register in the customer's mind? Yeah. They would go, ching, 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 ching. And then they would start saying, can you get one without that? Do you have one yeah. without this? Yeah. But I'm really looking for this. And so I'm, I'm actually giving them a walk around on the wrong car because they didn't slow myself down and find out their wants, needs, and hot buttons. That's right. Okay? That's right. I'm going to try to really sell you on why this is part of closing. Me finding their wants, needs, and hot buttons is going to help me pick out that one perfect car I have in my inventory that fits closest to what they're looking for. Finding out their wants, needs, and hot buttons is going to tell me what I should be covering in my presentation demonstration. Finding their wants, needs, and hot buttons is going to help me take the specific features that they're interested in and turn those into advantages and benefits. You know, finding their wants, needs, and hot buttons, check this out, Jim, it's going to help me paint the, the car and the customer's life. I mean, that's got to be closing, right? That's right. Is that closing? You know, uh, what about, you know, what about the presentation demonstration? I mean, gosh dang, uh, a presentation, that's where me and the car the customer's considering is on stage. Did you know... 50% of the customers said they bought on the spot that they just got a good presentation demonstration. Did you know 80% of the entire decision to buy is made in the value building steps of the sale? So that's gotta be, that's gotta be closing right there. The presentation demonstration, 
Jim, it's the excitement part of the sale. It's where the customer takes mental ownership. It's where you say, hey, this is the car for you, and let me tell you why, okay? You know, the demo, uh, 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 a lot of us are just too lazy to go on demos, or we don't have the skills to, to do more demos, okay? Right. Or we just do a bad habit from COVID, and now we're not going on demos. But the demo is the emotional peak in the entire selling or, process. Yeah. Or we believe the customer when they told us, oh, I've already driven the car. I already know the car. I've already yes. driven it. Okay. But yes. little do you know that, you know, that they've already told the last three sales persons that the, that exact same line and they've probably yes. never driven the car. Yeah. Well, they are trying to find a salesperson they like. Okay. They're trying to find a dealership they're comfortable with and them saying, hey, listen, we've driven it down the street could be kind of a defense mechanism. Yeah. You know, and that look, no demo, no sale. If I can't close the customer on a demo, it's going to be real tough to close them on the numbers later on in the office. Right. That's right. Yeah. You know, just to talk about closing for a second. I mean, we're this whole thing's about closing. But if a customer says, listen, I've already driven one down the street. All we got to say in the very nice way is just, hey, that kind of concerns me because this truck, it typically sells itself. Let me at least point a few things out that they may have left out. Come on, jump in the car. You're going to love this truck. That's right. Okay. You know, the key is, is you just got to make friends with the customer. If you That's make right. friends with the customer, they're going to like you, which means they're going to be willing to listen and believe you. Not to mention 99% want to drive anyways. So, so we got, here's the point, okay? Closing isn't a step. You close the sale step by step. This is the point of the video. We're all looking for, you know, step five, hold your breath, cross fingers, blurt out if I could, would you? Or blurt out other than price, okay? You don't, that's, closing's not a step. You have to be flawless within the selling process. The Joe Verde selling process helps you build the momentum step-by-step step to increase your odds of delivering a vehicle today. That's closing, you know? And you if know, you closing. do that, if you do that with every single customer, not some of them, not the ones you kind of feel good about, but every single customer, yes. isn't it true that you have, just by the sheer science, you're gonna sell more cars? Yeah, look, look, it's this simple. A lot of you watching this are saying, I don't know, man, things are different, check this out. You warm the customer up, okay? You get them to like you, okay? Once they like you, they'll be more open-minded, willing to listen and believe you. Then you build value on a car that you have in stock that fits closest to their wants and needs. So look, warm them up, build value, and then get the customer in the excited, I wanna buy now mindset. And the thing about it is, Jim, this is all value focused. Right. So you're still gonna have some meat on the bones. That's right. So you're gonna minimize your mini deals, make more money on each sale, customer's gonna have a better buying experience, your CSI is gonna be off the charts, and, and you're gonna be selling 20 plus cars a month. Jim, and I'll end it with this, that makes a huge difference, okay? One phrase that'll help a salesperson sell more cars immediately, okay? Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Yeah. My lane is make friends, find wants and needs. My lane is give the customer a great presentation demonstrator. My lane is to get the customer excited and thinking now. My lane is to get the customer to, uh, to the write-up so we can talk intelligently about real numbers on what it takes to buy this car. My lane is not ballparking interest rates. My lane is not ballparking what we would take for this car. My lane is not to try to figure out what this guy's credit is. That, that stay, stay in your lane. You're going to get more write-ups. You're going to sell more cars. That's right. That's right. No true words have been spoken. Sean Gardner, instructor and sales trainer at the Joe Verde Group. Thank you so much for joining us here on CBT. We very much appreciate it. And thank all of you for watching. And don't forget, you can access all of our CBT News in-depth interviews and shows just like this one on Roku and Apple TV now. So all you got to do is download the app. So thank you so much, Sean. Really appreciate it. Until next time, stay well, my friend. Thank you, Jim. Been a pleasure. Thanks.